Suppose we're concerned with producing clean drinking water. So we put chlorine in the water. You need an average of three parts of chlorine per million parts of water to effectively kill harmful bacteria. We're going to look at two cities and ask whether they have an adequate quantity of chlorine in the water to kill the bacteria. So we take a sample every hour of city A's water and record the quantity of chlorine in the water. We then do the same thing in city B. And we find that over the course of the day, the quantity of chlorine in the water varies, but in city A it averages three parts per million, and in city B it also averages three parts per million. But the numbers look markedly different. When we look at the readings for city A, we notice that the average chlorine is three parts per million, but the standard deviation is 0.22. Meanwhile, in city B, the average is three parts per million, but the standard deviation is 2.91. So this raises the question, if we're getting an average of three parts per million, and that's the average we want, why do we care about the standard deviation? Well, the reason we care is because chlorine is a poison. If we put too little of it in the water, then the people die of contaminated water. But if we put too much of it in the water, then the people die of chlorine poisoning. So if we look at city A, what we see is that in each hour we have almost exactly three parts per million of chlorine. That is, in each hour we have enough chlorine to kill the germs, but not so much that we kill the people. Meanwhile, in city B, although we also average three parts per million, in some hours we have so much chlorine that we poison the people. In other hours we have so little chlorine that the water is contaminated. So we notice that sometimes it's not just the average that matters, but also the standard deviation. Standard deviation measures consistency. Suppose our goal is not simply three parts per million on average, but also that the variance of the chlorine in the water does not exceed 0.04. So we can conduct a hypothesis test. Our null hypothesis is that the population variance of the chlorine in the water equals 0.04. The alternative hypothesis is that the population variance of the chlorine in the water exceeds 0.04. To conduct a hypothesis test for a variance or a standard deviation, we construct a test statistic that is the number of observations, minus one, times the observed variance divided by the hypothesized variance. In this case, for city A, we have a standard deviation of 0.22. We square that to get our observed variance. We have seven observations, and our hypothesized variance is 0.04. Putting these together gives us a test statistic of 7.26. Sample variances are chi-squared distributed, with degrees of freedom equal to the number of observations in the sample minus one. So we take a chi-squared distribution and we find our test statistic, 7.26. Our alternative hypothesis is that the population variance is greater than 0.04. So we're concerned with the area from the test statistic to the right. This is 29.7%. To show any evidence at all of rejecting the null hypothesis, our p-value has to be below 0.1. Our p-value is 0.297. So we conclude for city A, there is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis in this case is that the population variance of chlorine is appropriate. We would conclude then that there's no evidence here that the water is unsafe. Now let's look at city B. The standard deviation of chlorine in city B is 2.91. Squaring that gives us a variance of 8.47. Our observed variance is 8.47. Our number of observations is 7. And our hypothesized variance is 0.04. This gives us a test statistic of 1,270. We look at a chi-squared distribution and superimpose on this our test statistic of 1,270. Our alternative hypothesis is that the variance is greater than 0.04. So we're concerned with the area from the test statistic to the right. That area is virtually zero. So we conclude that we have very strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis in city B. The null hypothesis is that the population variance is 0.04. In city B, we reject this and conclude that the population variance of chlorine is greater than 0.04. Therefore, the water in city B is unsafe. To find the area on the chi-squared distribution, we use the chi-squared.dist function in Excel. The function takes three arguments. The first is the test statistic, in this case 7.26. 
The second is the degrees of freedom, which is the number of observations in the sample minus one. The third argument is the word true. The function returns the area to the left of the test statistic. In this case, 70.3%. For city A, we're concerned with the area to the right of the test statistic, which is 100% minus 70.3%, or 29.7%.